Hello, I'm Butch Curry from Zombie Nirvana Games. Welcome to the 10th episode of Fantasy Cartography with Adobe Photoshop, the podcast where I share my favorite tips, tricks, and techniques to help you make cool maps for your role-playing games. As you can see, we now have all the elements necessary for our map. We created a paper background, then added a forest, lake, roads, and buildings. Now, we could just leave it at that, and we'd have a pretty decent map. But if you really want to make this map look like it was drawn by hand, we'll need to go the extra mile. So let's get started. At a glance, we might fool someone into thinking that this was a hand-drawn map. But on closer inspection, the illusion really falls apart. You can clearly see that the line work is basically floating over the background. To really pull off the look that we're going for, we need to wrap the line work around the folds and crevices of the paper. And Photoshop gives us a couple of very effective tools for pulling this off. The first of these tools is the Displace Filter. Now, I could just go up here to Filter, come down to Distort, over to Displace, run the filter and have done with it. But I think there are some tools in Photoshop where a deeper understanding of that tool's inner workings really pays off in the long run. With that in mind, here's how the Displace Filter really works. Displacement is really just an illusion of depth. Photoshop creates this illusion by comparing a pixel in your image to the corresponding pixel in another image that's called the displacement map. In this case, we want to use our paper background as the displacement map because we want the line work to appear as though it's wrapping around the paper. To use the displace filter, we'll need to save the paper background as a separate Photoshop file. We can do that very easily just by coming down to the paper layer. I'm going to hold down the Alt button and click on the I here to hide all the other layers. I'm just going to hit Control A to select everything, Control C to copy it, and then Control N to start a new file. One of the nice things about Photoshop is that if you have a file loaded in the clipboard uh, and then create a new document, it'll automatically create it to the same width, height, and resolution as the file you have in the clipboard. So I'll just hit OK there, Control V to paste, and Control S to save. I'm just going to save it out on the desktop as Untitled 2. Save. Now we'll come back to our map, deselect, show our other layers again. Just get those all turned back on, just like that. And the background. There we go. Now, when we run the displacement map filter, Photoshop will compare a pixel on our image to a pixel on the displacement map. If the pixel on the displacement map is white, the pixel on the image will be shifted up and to the left. If the pixel on the displacement map is black, the pixel on the image is shifted down and to the right. Gray tones receive less displacement, and those at 50% gray aren't displaced at all. Now, just to backtrack for a moment, you may remember way back in our very first episode when we created our paper background, uh, we did it by running two filters. And that was filter render clouds, and filter stylize emboss. Now what the emboss filter is doing is it's looking for areas of white and basically pushing them down into the paper and creates an illusion of depth by adding a highlight and a shadow area. The highlights are on the top left and the shadows are on the bottom right, just like uh, what the displacement filter is doing. Another thing that you'll notice here is that most of the pixels in this embossed paper are actually gray. 50% gray to be precise. And we can prove this just by bringing up the levels dialog and taking a quick look at the histogram. The histogram is this graph here. And it's basically a graph of the values found within the image. You can see a big spike right in the middle at the 50% gray mark. And that means that if we were to use this as a displacement map, then most of the pixels would remain undisplaced. And that's really what we want. We only want to displace the highlights and the shadows. We want to leave everything else as is. And now you can really see how Photoshop kind of allows you to bring all of these different tools together uh, to create some really interesting effects in your images. It's going to hit OK here, close this out. And now we're going to come back to our map, and now we're going to kind of get into it now that you kind of understand what's happening with the Displace Filter. We're going to displace first our uh, buildings. So we're going to come up here to Filter, down to Distort, over to Displace. 
uh, the scale here basically will tell you how much the uh, pixels are going to be displaced, the maximum amount. These, these two sections down here, displacement map and undefined areas, we don't have to worry about. Those only come into play if you're using a displacement map that is a different size than the image you're displacing. We already know that our displacement map is exactly the same size as our image here, so we don't have to worry about it. So we can just hit OK. And then you choose a displacement map. We want to use our Untitled 2. Open. And it will displace those uh, buildings. You can see it really kind of roughed them up. Now, if that's too much, you can always come back, hit Control z uh, and run the filter again. Now, that's precisely why we're doing this in separate layers. Different layers are going to be able to take a different amount of displacement. Our roads, we can displace quite a bit. Our buildings, we probably don't want to displace quite as much. And our text, if we want it to remain readable, we want it to just barely be displaced. So we'll come up here to Filter, Distort, Displace. We'll cut it down to about 8%. That looks pretty good. Down to our roads. I'm just going to hit Alt Control F, and that's going to run the same filter, but with different settings this time. Uh, so we'll bump that back up to 10 for the roads. And use Untitled 2 again. And that gives those a pretty nice displacement there. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and displace one of the text layers as well. So I'll come over here, Control Alt F. It's going to have to rasterize it, uh, which basically just means it's not going to be editable anymore, but that's fine. So we'll hit OK. Uh, we want to displace this just a little bit, so we're going to bring it down to only about 4%. Hit OK. Select Untitled 2. Just like that. And then you can go through and displace all the rest of the uh, layers and text uh, until you've got it done exactly as you like. We've got one other tool that we can use to help wrap our line work around this paper background. And it's one that I'd be willing to bet that most of you have never used. But I can see we're about to run out of time for this episode, so we're going to have to save that for next week. That's going to do it for this week. Don't forget to stop by ZombieNirvana.com for this week's show notes and for more information about my upcoming fantasy cartography book. Volume 1, Overland, is shaping up pretty nicely, so keep an eye out for a sneak peek coming soon. Until next week... Thanks for listening and happy mapping. Will you go? Lassie, will you go?